Thanks, Simon. And now for something completely different, um, our next speaker, Ali Coyne, is from um, the School of Biotechnology. She's doing her research based in NICB on the Glasnevin campus. Ali's from Dundalk in County Louth, and she studied biochemistry in Trinity College, Dublin. Her PhD is funded by Altec, um, and when she's not researching, she's interested in what she describes as kitchen science, but all the rest of us know is baking and kayaking. Okay, thanks. Completely regretting that nerdy joke. <laughs> um, so I'm based in the National Institute of Cellular Biotechnology in DCU, and I'm hoping to give a little bit of an idea about what selenium is to set some context and um, describe a model that we use in the lab and the big experiment that I'm working on at the moment. So selenium is a trace element that's found in the diet and how much we get from our diets is actually based on the selenium content of the soil. So you can see in Ireland as well as across Europe and across the world, there are varying pockets of low selenium levels in the soil, medium and high. And um, we can take selenium supplements also as well as getting it from foods that are rich in selenium. Probably the most commonly known is uh, Brazil nuts. So the thing about selenium, I think the best way to describe it is the Goldilocks effect. So if you have too little selenium, you leave yourself open to damage. And if you have too much selenium, there's also damage there. So there's a narrow range for the protective effects. And one of the key functions of selenium containing proteins are the antioxidant protection that it provides. So this is a pictorial representation of a free radical. And these free radicals cause oxidative damage. So they can come from external sources, uh, such as radiation or pollution, or internal sources such as poor nutrition or stress and these free radicals are essentially like a two-year-old having a tantrum they cause havoc all around them and one of those uh, the outcomes of this can be cancer so selenium's role in cancer has gained interest in cancer research because it's a protector and it neutralizes these free radicals before they cause damage in the cell and there have been studies in various populations around the world that have found links between low selenium levels and certain types of cancer, such as skin, lung, colon, and prostate. But in clinical trials where they've tried to supplement people with selenium and increase those levels, the results have been inconclusive. So there have been positive benefits found in some and then no benefits found in others. So we're back to the drawing board. So uh, the model that we use for cancer in the lab is cell culture, and we can grow basically any cells from the body in, um, in the lab to understand what's happening in that organ at the level of the cell. And so the big experiment at the moment, if we look at this top part here, uh, I'm growing the cells in the lab and then exposing them to ionizing radiation and this causes a huge amount of these free radicals and the oxidative stress and damage to the cells. And um, the cells can respond to this stress in one of three ways. If, this, if the damage is too much, the cells will die if they won't be able to repair themselves. Um, the second response is that the cells will successfully repair themselves. And finally, the cells could attempt to repair themselves but um, incorporate mistakes into the DNA and these can lead to cancer. So what I propose to do is to use selenium to feed the cells before exposing them to the radiation and then testing what will happen to the oxidative levels of stress so primarily, can we reduce the amount of oxidative stress by supplementing with selenium and therefore reducing the possibility of cancer formation? And the potential impact of this research, it's, it's all about understanding more about the role that selenium is playing in cancer prevention and also trying to understand how much selenium we should be getting from our diet to maximise this protection. So um, I hope I've covered a little bit about selenium and a little bit about the model that we can use to test this in the lab and the big experiment that I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> Thank you.